Good morning, everybody. So I'm Nikki Ross from Fulton Hogan. Um, I thought I would start by telling you a little bit about Fulton Hogan before we get too much into what we're doing. So Fulton Hogan is a privately owned company um, with a strong tradition of family and staff ownership. We're currently employing 5,500 people across New Zealand and Australia, and 850 of those staff are based in Canterbury, so we've got a big, big range here. Um, we carry out contracting and construction operations throughout New Zealand, Australia and the South Pacific. And we also operate rail and land development businesses in New Zealand. Because of the type of work and the industries we are in, safety is of course of utmost importance and identifying hazards is a priority for ensuring a safe workplace for all our staff. So the biggest hazards we have identified, that's why we're here, is uh, noise and dust. Um, managing exposure to the hazards, uh, as the hazardous agents in the workplace and protecting our worker health is at the heart of our Fulton Hogan values. Um, so we regularly assess the hazards presence in our sites and our ultimate aim is to eliminate these hazards. Elimination at the source can involve three areas. Firstly, we look at our production process and see how we can eliminate any of the risks there. Secondly, we look at what hazardous substances are present and work around that as well. And thirdly, we examine the work practices that our staff use. Specifically, this can mean using processes that we've talked about already, such as water carts and water suppression systems, ventilation and containment systems, and often this can eliminate the dust and noise. We continue to assess everything, and um, certainly if we see that we've got control measures showing us that exposures are happening, then we um, really need to look at how we can protect our workers and the general environment. So the identified hazards are monitored through the use of set point monitoring. Um, so that includes things such as borehole and dust gauges that are set at specific sites around our different areas, so be it our quarries or some of our land development sites. We have personal dust monitoring. These pictures are a bit out of order, so we'll just pick through them. So these are pretty cool, our personal dust monitoring, and we have our noise sampling. So the first picture is of a personal noise monitor. It can also be used at set points. The second is an air valve off a dust monitor, and the, the blue machine is what um, is recorded. So it is um, personal dust monitoring is usually carried out by the, by the staff member wearing one of these. The little black thing is a... Um, an air mover and that sits close up to where their breathing zone is and the noise exposure is managed in much the same way. Um, it measures the amount of noise a staff member is exposed to for their entire day of work. So the reports, this is a copy of one of the reports that's generated from those two little machines. So the reports come out automatically. Um, we've got a lab on site at Pound Road that processes all the information out of the receiving units. And these reports are, um, are generated and they go to the managers um, who act on any issues that are identified. So that includes if they're finding that anybody has been exposed, uh, a referral to me at the Occupational Health Service and we'll do a comprehensive assessment. So the types of risks to exposure and, and dust, dust and noise hazards, sorry, are what we've been talking about are our risk of respiratory exposure. Uh, eye contamination was something that hasn't been discussed, but is we've, I'll talk about a little bit more. And of course, hearing losses. So if we can't fully eliminate any of the hazards that we've talked about, our processes involve the use of the PPE or, or RPE as well, warning signs, training, and continual monitoring of the risks. So as I was saying, eye contamination was something that we found um, during the monitoring process. And um, foreign bodies proved to probably want to be uh, the, when we were looking at what people were presenting for over the past year, I think we had three cases of foreign bodies and eyes. Now this was despite those three staff members all wearing eye protection, certified eye protection when they came in. So two of the guys came in from the quarry and one came in from one of our land development areas with um, just, just small bits of dust in their eye, but if we know if it's left for a while, it's gonna cause some trouble. 
So we've addressed this, we've looked into it quite a bit and thinking how are these guys still managing to get bits in their eyes when they're wearing all the proper gear? Well, we, um, our former safety manager actually formed a partnership with one of the safety glass suppliers and they've come up, it's still a work in process, but they're looking at a development of the safety glasses to ensure they've actually got better rims on them and we're getting that protection from underneath and better fitting glasses. So that's still a work in progress, but I think it'd be positive for the whole industry once we get a result with that. We also ensure that we've got eye wash stations on all of our sites and also in the first aid room. So basically, even without the new glasses, we've managed to minimise the risk by ensuring the guys are wearing some guardings on their glasses as well. Probably the biggest thing that um, today's about is that we are monitoring our people and um, not just not just the environment. We hear a lot about, about managing our environment for dust and noise, but a real focus for Fulton Hogan has been that we're monitoring our people. So that's where I came into the picture. So I was employed a year ago by Fulton Hogan to combat our growing numbers, 850 staff, um, and it just meant that the, the team has access uh, more regularly than what they have in the past to, to a health provider. And I think, as Donna was saying before, a lot of these guys and girls, I'm the only point of contact they ever have with anybody or from a nursing or from a medical profession. So it's great to be able to form relationships with these guys and certainly means that um, they're a little bit more open to come and talk to us about any hazards they're facing as well. So how do we monitor our staff? Well, we've got me, as I said and um, we monitor all of our staff. So whether they're exposure to risk or not, they're all monitored. Um, so all our office staff have full monitoring as well. They don't have spirometry, but certainly if they're from any of the questionnaires, if they're exposed, then we can absolutely do that as well. So all the staff, whether, as I said, whether exposed to risk or not, when they're first employed, we have pre-employment screening medicals to gauge a baseline, as we've already talked about. Here's one of our guys having a blow on the spirometry. Was really happy about posing for that photo. Um, and then uh, we do our hearing at the same time. So hearing and lung functions plus full CVD and any, any, anything else. Uh, all the questionnaires are completed at that stage as well. At three months, our guys are then um, given another hearing test. And then yearly after that, all our staff have another check to monitor their hearing, their lung function cardiovascular risk or any other issues that may have pre um, presented for that staff member over the year. It's our hearing. Um, our hearing at, certainly at work is our hearing stations not the highest quality so we do make a lot of referrals to an external agency so if we're picking up anything at all in our hearing tests then we don't hesitate to refer through to an audiologist for a formal report as well. And I think that's something within the industry we do need to encourage is get these formal reports done. It's all very good to have a set up in a little soundproof room. Our biggest hazard, our biggest problem when we were setting up the um, occupational service at Fulton Hogan was our space. They spent a whole heap of money soundproofing this room so we could do hearing tests. But the main door out into the corridor was a glass door, so it just turned into a funnel. So every noise that went on in the office, including, good morning, welcome to Fulton Hogan, absolutely focused into the room. So um, yeah, it's certainly, certainly been a challenge trying to get a good space to conduct hearing tests, and it's why we don't hesitate to refer on to the audiologist if we need to. So our specific tests that we have at, at the office, we have spirometry, we have the audiometry, we do pulse ox, um, we can listen to chests as well if we need to and all the other, we do height, weight, all the rest of it, and um, full CVD assessments. So as I said, if we have any variance at all outside of normal ranges or changes for the staff member, then we don't hesitate to refer, and as I said, that's to the audiologists or to our company GP, who then can make any referrals on to any other specialists that they deem. Luckily, um, we've, we haven't had any of that in the past year, just the audiology review, so we're looking pretty good. So finally, really importantly at Fulton Hogan, our staff are really encouraged to, to be, staff are encouraged and supported to take all practicable steps to keep themselves and, our other, and other people around them safe. 
So we really, really encourage our staff to notify their managers or their foremans if they have any concerns, re-noise or dust levels. You know, they're the guys that are out in the field and they're the ones that can tell us really well if our systems are failing and we can get out there and monitor them and really listen to what needs to be done. Um, as we talked about with the Triax girls, is making sure they're wearing the correct PPE or RPE correctly, which can sometimes be the biggest thing. So it's again, it's encouraging the guys to bring their hearing protection in when they come in to see me. When we're on site, having a look, making sure things are being worn properly. And probably, as Donna said as well, our biggest problem with respiratory fits is uh, facial hair, just the boys. <laughs> um, the other thing that we're really trying to encourage with our guys um, and the girls as well is not taking their dirty or dusty clothing home to be washed and I think Donna you raised that as well about the slush running off and then our guys going home with dirty boots or gear and it's going through their wash and contaminating the family's gear. One minute. Um, again the good personal hygiene and that's really talking about smoking and making sure we're not having guys smoking on sites. And the other thing is really encouraging the guys to consent and to participate in the health monitoring program so we can keep a really good eye on them. So, yeah, basically that's it. I'll wind it up there. Thank you. Thank you.